Hello, my name is Stephen Gallagher, and I'm a professional consultant and professor of practice in law at the Faculty of Law, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, or CUHK Law, as we like to call it. This video is a short introduction to a course that I teach on our Masters in Common Laws program. Um, the course is called Principles of Art, Antiquities, Cultural Heritage and Law. So this is just a short introduction to some of the topics that we deal with on that course. You may be asking yourself why we teach a course about our antiquities and cultural heritage in a modern city like Hong Kong. Well, one reason, of course, is that Hong Kong is one of the world's foremost art and antiquities marketplaces, uh, particularly, of course, for, for Asian art and antiques. Um, but also Hong Kong has its own rich cultural heritage. It's part of China. And of course, China has got a very rich cultural heritage uh, now, I think, jointly with Italy, the most uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the world. Uh, but Hong Kong has got its own cultural heritage, some of which may be questionable. That sort of concept of cultural heritage is one of the things we have to deal with in the first week. The course takes place over 13 weeks. It usually starts in January. But one of the things we, first things we have to consider is what we mean by cultural heritage. And we see that it has quite a wide definition. It's a term from international law. Uh, it comes from certain international conventions but it has been something that has now has a popular meaning and, and some of its popular identifications are, well, controversial um, and lead to some interesting discussions. But even if you're not happy with perhaps American fast food restaurants being identified as Hong Kong's cultural heritage, there are other places that might be uh, more in line with what you consider to be a, a heritage building. For example, perhaps the Chilin Nunnery, which is in Diamond Hill in uh, Kowloon in Hong Kong. Although, of course, there'll be some people who question whether this should be cultural heritage as well, and we'll discuss why uh, in the course. Apart from that, we start talking about built heritage, and Hong Kong has a considerable wealth of built heritage, including um, at least one old pagoda and some very, very interesting old buildings that form part of the, the story of Hong Kong. These are from the Ping Shan Trail in the New Territories. So we talk about those, we talk about the issues to do with these buildings, we talk about the protection for them, and we talk about the fact that sometimes there is no protection for them, and we are going to lose some of this heritage. But we, we have to question about what the balance is about protecting built heritage and about developing uh, in a city uh, which has a pressure uh, for development because of population and because of uh, business needs as well. We'll talk about owning art and antiquities, not just in Hong Kong, but around the world. We'll talk about some of the most interesting and controversial cases. Maybe we'll talk about uh, whether people should take marbles uh, from Greece, uh, whether they should return them now, even if they are in a museum. We'll talk about uh, instances to do with other treasures that have been taken from elsewhere in the world, including, of course, the old summer palace in Beijing. Uh, and we'll have to discuss these bronze heads and the uh, issues that arose when these bronze heads came up for sale in an auction about 10 years ago. We'll talk about other issues for collectors today. The fact that sometimes you may want to buy something or even have something in your collection, which suddenly you find is not so easy to dispose of anymore perhaps because it's made from an endangered species, even though that endangered species, uh, this particular example was killed many years before. We'll talk about the issues with collecting human body parts. Can you own the human body? Um, we'll talk about some of the issues to do with this. And of course, the fact that sometimes you may buy something, an antiquity, and not realize that actually inside it, there is a human body. And what happens then? and some of the issues that can arise with owning antiquities that have human bodies inside them or as part of them. We'll talk about artists' rights uh, and when artists get upset with their rights being abused. And we'll talk about graffiti as a particular type of art and some of the issues that arise with regard to graffiti. We'll talk about how some of these disputes to do with art may be settled today um, and of course, We'll talk about new forms of art uh, and whether this really is art and what it actually is. Um, is this a non-fungible token? What is a new fungible token? Can you own a new fungible token? And if you do, do you own this artwork? What do you get when you buy a, a non-fungible token? All of these questions we have to deal with 
in the course. We'll talk about art crimes, uh, in particular when thumbs get stolen uh, and it becomes an international incident. And we'll talk about whether the destruction of artworks is a crime or whether it is art in itself. We'll talk about when heritage sites may be used for what is alleged to be a crime as well, in particular, uh, when we have certain initiation ceremonies apparently taking place in heritage sites in Hong Kong. We'll talk about many of the issues that face people buying art and antiquities today, and of course, the lawyers that are advising them. If you're buying a painting for 450 million US dollars, should you be happy with everything that's been said about that painting? And once you bought it, if people say, detrimental things about the painting, have you got any response or recourse at law to deal with those detrimental comments? Even if the painting didn't look as good as it does now, only a few years ago. We'll talk about the whole issue of fakes, copies, imitations, homage, forgeries. We'll talk about all of those issues and what actually constitutes a fake and what happens if someone sells a fake or you buy a fake, what recourse you've got, civil law and criminal law. We'll talk about other issues to do with buying uh, items today, including issues of provenance and exactly what we mean by provenance and what issues we should look out for with provenance today. And we'll talk about the fact that even museums get it wrong sometimes. Even museums haven't made adequate checks on provenance or perhaps have been too trusting of the people that they actually purchase things from. We'll talk about the issues to do with art, antiquities, cultural heritage and armed conflict. We'll talk about the first uh, heritage uh, convention, which was to do with armed conflict in 1954. And we'll talk about the issues that arose uh, to do with that particular convention and issues that we're still dealing with today to do with art, art that has been looted uh, during armed conflict, including the forced sales that occurred uh, under the Nazi occupation of Europe and some of the ways that they are being dealt with today. But we'll also focus a lot on what's happened in Asia and some of the things that happened during the armed conflicts in Asia. A lot of these things are not mentioned today. We mentioned earlier the issues to do with the old Summer Palace in Beijing, but not much is said about what happened in subsequent conflicts in Asia. And we need to talk a little bit about those uh, and some of the things that were taken and some of the damage that was done during armed conflict and perhaps what the law can do about that today and whether the law should have done something about it at the time. We'll talk about terrorism and um, art and antiquities and cultural heritage. Uh, and we'll talk about the international community trying to do something about terrorists using art, antiquities and cultural heritage today to promote their terrorist messages. We'll talk about museums and the issues that face museums and archeologists and others involved in that sort of museum archeology span world as well the problems that museums have with their existing collections, with adding to their collections, with getting rid of their collections as well. And then we'll talk a little bit about whether museums should return things. We'll talk about the issue that is hot in 2021, the Benin bronzes, about whether the things that were taken from Benin city by uh, the armed forces that invaded them back at the end of the 19th century, whether they should be returned to Benin today, whether museums should be um, actively seeking to return things from their collections. And we'll contrast it with a contemporary story, contemporary to the acquisition of the Bean Bronzes. We'll talk about the acquisition of these gates uh, that were taken from a walled village in the new territories of Hong Kong. And we're the subject of one of the first repatriations, a voluntary repatriation of the gates back in the 1920s. So we'll talk about the story of these gates in Hong Kong. We'll talk about underwater cultural heritage and of course in particular we'll be talking about shipwrecks and the treasure that is obtained from shipwrecks. The wealth of knowledge that we gain from these shipwrecks but also the artifacts as well and the owning of these artifacts, the excavation of them, the sale of them, all of the issues that arise and of course in particular we'll be talking about those issues in the Asia Pacific region and in particular we'll be talking about the blue and white gold, the Chinese porcelain wrecks, that were recovered in the 1980s, the 1990s, and are still ongoing today, and about their sale, and about some of the issues that arose, and the subsequent changes that happened in domestic laws, particularly in China, and of course, international law as well. 
we'll talk about the newest form of cultural heritage, which is intangible cultural heritage. We'll try and understand what intangible cultural heritage is, uh, whether it is the knowledge of the gentleman at the top left there, uh, who was known as the Tin Man of Saikul because of his particular skill in working um, with a hammer and beating tin, and perhaps the construction of bamboo theatres or lion dances and other forms of intangible cultural heritage. And then we'll talk about the big legal issues to do with intangible cultural heritage, where it overlaps with intellectual property. So we discuss the case of Proshek and Prosecco and whether intangible cultural heritage can trump intellectual property or whether it should. And then we'll talk about what is central to cultural heritage, the politics of cultural heritage. And that will be ongoing through the course uh, but in particular, perhaps at the end, we'll discuss some of those issues, such as the toppling of statues, as we've seen around the world in the last few years. The political issues that have arisen with regard to um, statues which commemorate uh, those who perhaps today we find their actions were unacceptable. And then we'll talk again about Asia and in particular Hong Kong. And the fact that Hong Kong, although many places have had problems with their colonial past, in some ways the people of Hong Kong like to celebrate their colonial past. And when threatened with the loss of some indication of their colonial heritage, I've actually protested and said, no, we don't want to lose that. So this is all part of the course. There's a lot more to it, of course. Um, I will try and post some more videos that deal with certain of the aspects that I've covered here in the next few weeks or months to try and build up a little bank of resources for those of you who are interested in issues to do with our antiquities and cultural heritage, in particular in Asia and of course specifically in Hong Kong. If you have got any questions or any comments then please feel free to email me um, and I'll gladly take any questions or comments from you. Uh, apart from that hopefully I'll get to see some of you um, on my course at the Faculty of Law, Chinese University of Hong Kong. If not, perhaps in some of our public lectures and seminars that we put on to do with issues in property and of course, legal history and other issues to do with cultural heritage. Thank you very much.